Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to learn how to manually program our flight plan into the working title G1000 NXI in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you don't have the NXI installed, you can get it for free in the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. Just search for NXI and download it. If you want to use the in-game ATC and have it know about your IFR flight plan, the only way to do that successfully with the NXI is by doing your flight plan through the world map. So if you follow the instructions in this video, you will notice that you do not get the option to request your IFR clearance in the ATC window. It's just a known limitation of the NXI that'll hopefully be fixed in the future. All right, now let's get into programming the NXI from scratch with our flight plan. For the first one, I'm using skyvector.com to do my flight plan, and I'm using this little suggested routes menu right here in the flight plan window. If you click on that, you'll get a list of suggested routes. And so I'm picking this first one here, which as you can see, has a few Victor Airways that we fly through. So let's start and program this directly into the NXI. One nice thing about starting cold and dark at parking and programming it in, in the cockpit is on the world map, all we need to do is choose our departure airport and then choose our parking spot. And then we can just load right into the sim. So I've already got the Kodiak started up and I'm gonna zoom into the MFD to get started with the flight plan. You can use the PFD or the MFD to do this, but the MFD, it's much larger, and I just prefer using the MFD when I do this kind of planning. First, all you have to do is hit the FPL button in the bottom right-hand corner to open the active flight plan window. The next thing we need to do is enable what's called the cursor, and you do this by pushing the inner FMS knob right here. There's both an outer and an inner part to this knob, and you want the smaller inner part. If you're using a mouse like I am, you point at the knob, hold the left mouse button down, and then right click to push the knob. But it'll differ mattering what type of controller you use. Once the cursor is activated, you move it by using the outer part of the FMS knob. And again, if you're using a mouse, a really convenient way to do this is by pointing at the knob and just rolling your mouse wheel up and down. You can do that on both parts of the knob and it makes it really easy and fast to interact with. The first thing we're going to do is enter our origin or departure airport. You do that on the second line here, the solid looking one. So once you highlight that, you need to roll the inner knob and that'll open up this waypoint information panel. You continue rolling the inner knob to choose the first letter or number. In this case, it's going to be all letters because it's an airport code. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the first letter K, then use the outer knob to move to the next space and then continue back and forth, outer and then inner knob to type in each one of the letters. Again, you can make this a little quicker if you're using a mouse by scrolling the wheel. So I'm going to enter KDLL, and it says press enter to accept, so you push the enter button. And now it'll ask us to optionally set the runway. I don't know which runway I'm going to use yet. I'll find out with ATC and the ATIS, so I'm just going to hit none for now. But if you did know the runway, you can use the inner knob to open up the choices to select a runway. And then you hit enter when you're done. Now we can see the first waypoint in. Next, we're gonna enter our destination. And it's good practice to do the origin and destination first. And that'll make choosing procedures easier later, which I'll show later in the video. So we're gonna scroll the outer FMS knob to get the cursor to show back up. And then we're going to scroll down to the solid line under the word destination. Now scroll the inner knob to get the waypoint information panel open. And then continue with the inner knob to choose the first letter. So we have K, and in this case, I'm gonna use the keyboard entry mode, which is a feature of the NXI. If you're using a keyboard and mouse, you can click either this little blue icon here, or you can click to the left where the field is, where you enter the letters, and that'll turn on keyboard entry mode. So now I just type, and you can click anywhere on the NXI screen to turn the keyboard entry mode off. It's very important you do that, otherwise you won't be able to press the enter button down here to accept that waypoint. All right, once again, I'm gonna hit enter because I don't know which runway we're gonna land at specifically yet. Next, I'm gonna zoom the map out by using the range knob. And I just wanna do this to check to make sure that our route is correct so far. It's only two waypoints we've entered, but I like to do this every waypoint or every other waypoint just to make sure that it's correct and matches what I'm expecting. Now we're gonna enter our first on-route waypoint, which is Mike Sierra November. So I'm gonna use the inner knob to add that to the on-route section. I'll just use the keyboard entry mode again. So I click up here to enable it, type MSN on the keyboard, and then click again to turn it off right away. Now I can hit enter. And here what we have is a duplicate waypoint warning. So the database has two different waypoints that are Mike Sierra November, and I need to tell it which one to use. So the first one is in the US, it says Great Lakes USA. The second one's in Australia. 
I can actually scroll to them to get some more details down here. So Australia says 9,200 miles away. Obviously, it's the first one. So I'm going to highlight USA and press enter to accept it. And once again, checking the map on the left, we can see that that is the expected waypoint. Next in our flight plan is an airway. V9 is a Victor airway, the Victor 9 airway. So we can add that by pressing menu. And then you can see it's selected on load airway. So we just hit enter to choose load airway. And we get a new little window here for the airway selection. You can see that our entry is MSN. That's where we enter the airway. Now we choose which airway we're going to be on. In our case, it's Victor 9. So we scroll down with the inner knob and then hit enter on V9, Victor 9. And now it'll load all the possible waypoints that we can exit the airway at. And for us, that's going to be the next waypoint in our list, JVL. So we go down and look for Juliet Victor Lima. It's a long list here. There's JVL. And now I'll press enter to choose that. What's really convenient about using this feature to enter the airways into the flight plan is that we get to see all of the waypoints we happen to pass over on our time on that airway automatically. So instead of having to program in every one of these waypoints, we just say where we enter and where we exit the airway, and it brings in all of those waypoints for us automatically. To finish loading the airway, all we do is use the outer knob to move the cursor down to where it says load and then press enter, and that'll load this airway segment into our flight plan. Here you can see we're entering airway Victor 9, exiting at JVL, and we can confirm that looks right over here on the map. Next, we have two more airways that we're going through. So I'm gonna scroll down using the outer knob to the next blank spot in the on route section. And once again, we're gonna enter another airway. Hit menu, hit enter. We choose the airway, in this case, it's Victor 216, hit enter wait for the exit options to load, and then use the inner knob again, scroll down to find wax. And again, we get all of those waypoints for free that we'll pass over. Now use the outer knob to scroll down and hit load, and we'll have our second airway in the flight plan. Once again, go over and I'm gonna zoom out on the map just to make sure that the entire flight plan looks right so far, and it does. So next we're gonna load our last airway, which is Victor 158. So I'll do this one a little faster and you'll get used to doing this pretty quickly. It's, uh, it's a little bit of muscle memory. And if you use your mouse wheel, if you have one, it makes it a lot easier. So I highly recommend seeing if you can use a mouse. Even if you're on Xbox, there are a bunch of wired mice that will work and let you do this really efficiently. All right, so I've entered Victor 158 as well and that completes our flight plan. When you enter a few Victor Airways, you get a pretty long flight plan. So there is this option under the menu section called Collapse Airways. And this will automatically just collapse them down to hide all those additional waypoints. So this is a really easy way to consolidate your flight plan, just make it a little easier to look through. If you add an incorrect waypoint, it's really easy to clear it. Uh, first of all, this is why I zoom out with the map a lot. Sometimes you'll enter a waypoint and it'll just be misspelled by one letter or something like that, or you'll flip two of the letters by accident. So here I just put in this waypoint called My Bad. You can see it's 1300 miles away and on the map we can clearly see that's way out of the way. So all we have to do is highlight the waypoint and then hit clear and then press enter and that'll remove it from our flight plan. Next as part of this flight plan I'm just going to quickly add an approach procedure. You can do that at any time just by pressing the proc button on the right side of the MFD. So I'll hit proc and it'll bring up this new menu called procedures. Here you can see we have three options approach, arrival, and departure procedures. So I'm going to hit enter to select an approach procedure. And now it'll show us automatically all of the available approaches at our destination airport. It automatically selected our destination airport for us on this menu because we had defined it in our flight plan already. So that's why I recommend always adding the origin and destination as your first two waypoints in your flight plan. Here I'm going to choose the ILS 25, so I press enter. If we wanted to select another one, we would use the inner knob, just like we did on the Airways menu, to choose between the options we're presented with. Here, I'm gonna choose Zadok as my initial approach fix. That's my transition waypoint. And then finally, for the minimums, I'm gonna roll the inner knob to choose barometric. That's our only option here. And then finally, I'm gonna enter the minimums here for this approach, which is 847 feet. And I'm gonna do that by using the inner knob again. There is a small trick. If you're on keyboard and mouse, you can hold shift while turning this number higher and it'll jump 20 feet at a time instead of 10. 
Now, I'm not going to cover the specifics of why we're entering this number, but if you want to learn about ILS approaches and what this all means, you can go ahead and check out the video linked in the top right. It's also linked in the video description below. And lastly, we need to choose between load and activate. If we pick load, which is what we're going to choose, it'll just load that into our flight plan. Activate will load it, but then it'll also make the transition waypoint our active GPS waypoint. And we're not ready for that yet because we're still sitting on the ground. And now we can see at the bottom of our flight plan, it has changed our destination waypoint to showing the destination and the entire approach procedure that we selected, the ILS for runway 25. The last thing I'm going to do for this flight plan before we get to the next one is specify a departure runway and show you why that's really convenient. First, I'm going to highlight KDLL by enabling the cursor, and then I'm going to press enter over here. And that'll take me to the waypoint information screen and pre-populate it with that airport. So now we can see the runway information. I'm going to turn on the cursor again. Now I can see that runway is 32 and 14 is a turf surface runway that's 2,700 feet long. And then with the inner knob, I can select the other runway, which is 01 and 19 -er. That's a hard surface runway and longer. So I prefer to take off on the longer hard surface runway. So this is just a quick way to get the runway information right here in the G1000. Now all you have to do is press FPL to get back to the flight plan window, highlight the departure airport, and then roll the inner FMS knob to choose the runway. I hit enter twice. Now you can see up here it says runway 1 is selected for our departure runway. What's really cool about this is now you can zoom all the way in to get a miniature airport diagram and see the taxiways, and it's marked the start of runway 1 for us. So we have a general idea of which way we're going to go to taxi, one of these routes that leads down to runway 1. In this next flight plan example, I use SimBrief instead of SkyVector. And so here I'm going to enter my departure, arrival, and my aircraft type, and it'll automatically generate a recommended route for me. I noticed that this route was using a jet airway, and it wasn't all that interesting. This is a very simple route. So I went and chose view more routes over here on the right. So I chose this one here that has the Seagull 1 departure procedure and the Spud 3 arrival. All right, so let's program this in. I'm going to do it a little faster than last time because I've already explained everything. So we're going to start with the origin. I'm going to use the keyboard entry for each one of these just to speed it up, show you how quickly you can actually get this done. So I put in Salt Lake City, and SimBrief told me my departure runway is 16 right, so I'm going to choose that here. Enter, enter. Now I'm going to roll the big FMS knob, move the cursor back down to the destination airport. And now we enter Boise, Kilo Bravo, Oscar, India. Turn off the keyboard entry mode, hit enter. And for the runway, once again, I know what it is from SimBrief, so I'll choose 10 left, enter, and enter again. So now we have both the origin and destination put in. Next, we're going to enter our departure procedure. So we hit the procedures button, which is proc. And then in the procedures menu, use the outer knob to scroll down to select departure. Hit enter. Now we choose the departure name, which is Seagull1. Use the inner knob to choose it, and then press enter. And now it's going to ask us for our runway again, because the procedure depends on which runway we're taking off from. So once again, we choose our 1-6 right for our runway. And then choose our transition waypoint. That's actually the next waypoint that's listed in the flight plan is part of the departure procedure. So we choose Tango Whiskey Foxtrot for our transition. And we scroll all the way down and hit load. Now we can see the entire departure procedure is added to the plan. And lastly, let's add our arrival procedure. We hit the procedure button again on the bottom right. And then this time we use the outer knob to choose select arrival. Hit enter. And we'll choose our arrival, which is the SPUD3 arrival into Boise. Hit enter on SPUD3. Choose our arrival runway, which we know from the SimBrief plan is 10 left. And then choose our transition point. So once again, this is a transition point that's in our flight plan, not an on-route waypoint. This is part of the SPUD3 arrival. So we choose broth and then scroll down and hit load. And that's it for that flight plan. You could see that at first glance, it might look like Tango, Whiskey, Foxtrot, and Broth are on-route waypoints, but they're actually tied to the departure and the arrival procedures respectively. So I like to avoid some of that confusion by doing the departure and arrival procedures first when I'm programming in a flight plan that has them. All right, I hope you found this useful in getting started and programming in your own flight plans directly in the NXI yourself. 
A lot of the stuff we covered here will actually work inside the stock G1000 as well, but some of the features like load airways are only available in the NXI. So as always, I prefer to use the NXI. It's kind of the bleeding edge of what we have in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Please leave any questions, comments, and suggestions below. And if you want to join the Discord, you can find a link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.